Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome from my GR Sport Yaris Hybrid. I've owned the car two weeks now. 917 miles we've uh, managed to put on her in two weeks. And if you're wondering how I put miles on a car that quickly, a car to me is something I use for work. They're workhorses. I use my car every single day visiting customers so that's how I managed to put nearly 49,000 miles on my Yaris Dynamic the one I had previous to the GR Sport in two and a half years yeah it's a lot of miles and if anybody's interested in that car it's now up for sale in my Toyota dealership that I bought it off originally, where I picked my GR Sport up from. It's going for seventeen nine nine five. I'll give you a bit of history on the car if you're interested in it. Go and find it. It's a good car. I'm old school in the respect I run cars in still, even though they say you can just get in them and drive them nowadays, this manufacturing tolerances are so good. I still run my cars in. 5,000 miles I took the Dynamic in for its first oil and filter change, which is about the equivalent to 2,500 miles if it was just a pure petrol car, because they spend so much time on hybrid power. And then it went on to the 10,000 mile service intervals. If there was a recall to do on it, it went straight there. If there was any updates to do to it, it went straight into Toyota and had all the updates done. I didn't piss about with service on it. It was always done. It was normally done early. It never ever did 10,000 miles between services. Close, but never ever got to 10 and I never went over. We had one issue with the car, and that was the damper plate, which, if you imagine a, an old school car with a clutch, it's the flywheel basically that connects the engine to the hybrid transmission. That failed. Didn't stop me using the car when it failed, it still drove. Flag some codes up on the computer. I did do a video about it, and it's on the channel if you want to go and find it. Took it into the dealership. I told them what my suspicions were, because some of the early builds were having this problem, but not all of them. And they, they, they just basically threw the keys for a courtesy car at me and said, we'll give you a ring when it's fixed. And they put all the upgraded parts in, and the daft thing is, three days after I got it back, I got the recall letter for the job that had just gone in and failed on. So, give Toyota their kudos, they knew about the problem and they were sorting it out. But it was only on very, very early build, because mine was one of the first. Because mine was a September delivery. And I only ate, I waited eight weeks for that car, that's all I waited. So, yeah, it was an early, early build. Back to the GR, what my impressions after nearly a thousand miles, I absolutely love this car, it is a fantastic little machine, it doesn't half attract a lot of attention when you park it up, because it's different enough to be different but not stand out in your face. The first thing most people notice is the GR badge on the front of the car or if they're following you it's the GR badge on the back and the fact Toyota never hid the exhaust you can actually see the exhaust so them are the first things they notice and then when they walk around the side it's got the most amazing absolutely beautiful 10 spoke 18 inch alloys on it there's some of the best alloys on 
a modern small hatchback. They are an awesome looking wheel. Absolutely awesome. Let's just show you these alleys whilst we're looking at them. We might as well. They are absolutely gorgeous wheels. In fact, the whole car's gorgeous. The car is absolutely beautiful. The ash grey with the bitone roof is absolutely beautiful. It's a stunning, stunning looking car. This is what I mean by they haven't hidden the exhaust. That is one of the best rear ends on any hatchback on the planet. It, it, a really, really aggressive looking rear end. Bulbous. To the point. Right, it's cold out there. Let's get back in the car. And flip the camera back round. I never had any complaints about build quality on the dynamic. Everything fitted and worked and felt good. It never developed any rattles or squeaks for the entire time I owned the car. I never had a single rattle in the dash. I had no trim, move, rattle, squeak or anything. It was a really, really well put together car. And I loved it to bits. But as soon as I jumped in this GR Sport, the day I picked it up, things felt different. Um, they've totally have really, really upped the quality in the GR Sport. All the touch points, they're made of better materials. Things just feel nicer. They feel better screwed together. The materials just, they're nice to touch. Everything's nice to touch. It just feels a better quality car. I said in one of my videos when I did a review on the Dynamic I was talking about the doors and they're very very thin and they're thin for a reason it's same with the bonnet it's very thin metal it's there for protection of pedestrians cyclists that kind of thing so the car folds in but it always felt a little bit tinny when you shut the doors not tinny like a fiat or like my suzuki jimny that is tinny but it sounded tinny at its... You've got to expect that at the price point. It's not a £50,000, £60,000 car. It was a £22,000 car, the Dynamic. But I've got no, no qualms about the build quality. It was brilliant. But what I'm saying is they've upped the quality in the GR Sport. Everything feels more solid. The tailgate shuts nicer. It doesn't shut with a, a tinny ting. It shuts solid. The doors all shut more solid. The bonnet's the bonnet. That still sounds like the dynamic. It's not got a lot of soundproofing in it. But how I did improve the sound on the dynamic was... I use, when I'm rust-proofing cars, a product called Lanagard. And it's very, very thin when it comes out the gun. And it goes off like handle wax. And it stops a lot of resonance in body panels that are thin. 
and I sprayed it all inside the bonnet, I sprayed it all inside the doors, any box sections, and the car was always nicer after I lana guarded it and rust proofed it. I'm going to admit I've already done the same thing with the GR. I've already I nailed a gallon, five litres of this Lana Guard. It's in every single box section of the car. I've had every single piece of plastic trim in the boot removed so I can get to the inner wheel arches. I've had all the trim off the doors, off the door shuts, off the sill panels. I've had all the plastic trim off the sills so I can get to all the access holes and I've I've nailed the car in Lanagard. It is properly, properly protected against corrosion, even though Toyota do an amazing job. And the car now sounds even more better put together than it did the day I bought it. But there was a noticeable difference between the GR and the Dynamic on day one of owner from day one of ownership and day one of ownership of this. This was a better put together car using better materials. I've got three quibbles with the car. That's all I've got. And they're things I missed that the Dynamic had. And they're stupid things. They're things I can live with, but they are stupid. But they made a difference to me. One of them is When you put the sun visors down, on the dynamic, there was a light here. And the same on the passenger side. And when you slid the mirror flap, the light came on. That light was brilliant. I used to love having that light there because it shone the light onto you. And you could do paperwork and things in the car at night. So I missed that. And the other quibble I've got put the camera back down is it was the same on the dynamic the boot lights not very bright so I replaced that with an LED and the number plate lights they're just normal 501 incandescent bulbs so I replaced the bulbs on the dynamic with LEDs and it's more in character with the back of the car because every other light is LED. I haven't done my GR Sport yet with the LED conversion because I want to do number plate lights, boot lights. I also want to do the lights above the mirror because they're not very bright at night. I haven't figured out yet how to get all this apart, but I'm going to do it. I will figure it out. I won't give up on it. I've got the bulbs. I bought them the other day. I bought good quality bulbs. I didn't buy them off the internet, didn't buy them off Amazon or eBay. I went and bought really nice ones, which are compatible with the car. So. That's my thousand mile review up to now of the car i'm not even going to go into fuel consumption at the moment because i'm not driving it hard i'm running it in so my fuel consumption at the moment is going to be artificially high and the reason why i say that is i live on top of a mountain and i go up and down the mountain multiple times every day so the petrol engine is running, so I'm using fuel. If you live on the flat, you're not going to use anywhere near the amount of petrol that I use. So please, when I start releasing fuel figures for this car, don't take it as that's all the car will do. Because I know these things are capable of 70 plus to the gallon in the right conditions in the environment they were designed to be used in which is commuting and city driving i'm not commuting and i'm not city driving 
I live in a rural area on top of a mountain, so if I need to get off the mountain, I've got to go down it. Then I'm on the flat, and that's where my fuel economy gets good. But I have to then go back up the mountain. And on occasions, I go off my mountain into a valley, up another mountain, down the other side into a valley, and up another mountain to go and see customers. So I'm continuously going up and down, up and down, single track roads, up and over mountains. So my fuel consumption is not to be used as a base when you're thinking of purchasing one of these cars. Because my fuel consumption is always going to be higher than yours if you live in a city or a town and it's relatively flat where these are designed to be used. But don't get me wrong, they're totally capable even in my conditions of still doing 50, mid 50s to the gallon. On a run, I'm going to see 60 plus to the gallon out of it. But the first run I did on it, we did 54.4 to the gallon. But that was on an absolutely horrendous day. All it did was rain. And the car only had 250 miles on it when I started the journey. And we did 260 miles that day. So, motorway use, 70 miles an hour. Yeah, you're going to use a bit of petrol because the hybrid system doesn't kick in very often. But even that, to me, is a phenomenal fuel consumption. Considering my other car, my Suzuki Jimny, has never done more than 25 miles to the gallon. And that's only a 1.3. So I'm double what my Jimny was doing, and is still doing, and it's always done 25 at best. So I like my Yaris Hybrid. I love them to bits. It's not the first Hybrid I've owned. I started with a Prius after jumping out of a T-Sport Yaris. Prius was bought second hand, and the moment I bought the Prius and I started using it for work, I'm thinking, I've just doubled my fuel consumption from the T-Sport. So, I then bought a Mark III Yaris Hybrid. Then I bought the XL Mark III. Then I jumped to the Dynamic. And now I've jumped to the GR Sport. So that's a Prius, three of the Yarises, and the GR that's five hybrids on the bounce. That's how impressed I am with Toyota's hybrid technology. And each time I've bought one, the technology's moved on. Prius was good. The Gen 3 Yaris's were better than the Prius on fuel and nicer to drive. Transmission was better. Hybrid system was better. The moment I jumped onto the Generation 4 2020 on the Yaris's, they'd improved again. They've just got better and better. They're brilliant cars. Love them to bits. Consider one as your next car if you're looking for a small hatchback. Because Toyota's backup's brilliant. The warranty system's brilliant. You can get 10 years warranty on them now. What's, why not just pay the extra and buy the original hybrid, which is Toyota? Don't go down the route and buy a mild hybrid like all, a lot of the other manufacturers are selling because they're not a patch on Toyota's hybrid system. Hey, I'm going to sign off now. This has been a long video. Thanks for bearing with me if you've made it to the end. And once again, thank you and goodbye from the GR Sport. Oh, it's still snowing. I love the way the snow sits on this car.